he said. My favorite aunt is hearing impaired. He just said, you complete me. No. No, you. You complete me. You complete me. Mini me, you complete me. You complete me. Oh, it's so emotional, isn't it? It's a great movie line. You completely. You complete me. But it's not true. It's not true that we would ever think that another person would complete us. We're in trouble. So that's what we want to talk about as we start this series. How do we really live in completeness? And you may have a sense of that there's something more. If you're new here and you say, there's something more, and that's what I'm here looking for, there is. Jesus came to complete us, to give us a right relationship with God the Father. And once we understand that, once we live that out, then we can live in the fullness that we have in relationships here on earth. That is that relationships would add value to our lives and that we would add value to them. They'll never complete us, but they add value outside of the relationship of Jesus. So today, as we start this out, we're going to have some fun with it. I want you guys to be a part of it. We're going to talk about relationships. It's the first R in RPMs. And I know a lot of you men, you thought, oh, revolutions per minute. This is exciting. Um, no, that's not what we're talking about. But I love the illustration. And I'll use some car illustrations in this. I want you guys to be a part of it. So take out your phones, text me, church online. You can type it in the chat room. What's your favorite movie quote of all time? And some of you, it may be, you complete me. It may be, freedom. That's one of mine. Anybody know what that's from? Braveheart. Actually, in the last service, I had a brand new person introduce himself to me afterwards, and they said, you'll never forget me, because I said that. And he said, my name's William Wallace. I said, are you kidding me? That's great. He's William Wallace Jr. I, I asked him if he was the writer, and he's not, but he said he's related. So what's your favorite quote of all time? We're going to have some fun with that to connect the dots here uh, about uh, us living out relationships that fulfill what God has for us in our lives. Now, this is our key verse in this series over the next three weeks, Ephesians 3.19. May you experience the love of Christ. And again, for some of you, if you're new with us, that's our prayer with you for you today. If you've never experienced God's love or you're just checking out Christianity, my prayer is wherever you're at that you would experience Christ's love. For those of you who know Jesus, my prayer is that you would experience his love on a whole new level today, that you would go to the next level, that you would experience his love in a greater way. Paul goes on and he writes this. It's too great to fully understand. He says, then you will be, read it with me, made complete. Oh, come on, like you, like you really like it. You guys are usually my favorite crowd, okay? You know that, right? And I never say that to the other services. <laughs> We're going to do a series on lying coming up. Okay, let's, let's read this together. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. I, I want to live there. I want you to live there, to be made complete. Well, that is in Christ's love. Now, to be made complete in his love... He's the one who completes us. But when we live that out, then we have a responsibility in our relationships. We, I can't complete you. You can't complete me or anybody sitting next to you or somebody that you're with. You can't complete one another. But you can add value, and it should be a growing value every day of your life. That's what God has for us. And it, it's lived out in the same way that we have the life in those relationships and the power that he wants for us. Now, here's how Jesus said it. Here's what he tells us. John 13, Jesus said, I'm giving you a new commandment, love each other. Now, when you're reading scripture, you may say, that's a new idea with Jesus. It's not a new idea. In fact, if you go back into the Old Testament, you will see love each other over and over. Then why does he say, I'm giving you a new commandment? Jesus is, really says here, I'm giving you a, a new way of living this out, a revolutionary way. This is revolutionary stuff in the New Testament. And here's, here's the picture of why it's revolutionary. It, it goes from just having intent to love to putting love into action. And here's what Jesus says. He says, you're to love each other just as I have loved you. That's new. That, that you would love in such a way that you would go clear to Jesus said, you should love each other. 
your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples, that you would give your life, that you would love each other in the way that Jesus loved. Aren't you glad that he loved us so much that he didn't just talk about it, but he willingly went to the cross for us? He put love into action. He lived it out. And that's what he's telling us to do. He says, love one another. Now, for some, time, for, for some Christians, we think maybe this is optional. There, there are a lot of things, if we're honest, that we would say that we think are optional, that Jesus would say or not. Like, you know, serving one another, uh, serving in the body of Christ. We say, nah, I'm not there. It's kind of an option this season of my life. And Jesus would say, no, no, the, these things aren't optional. This is one of those things that's not optional. Let me, let me illustrate. So I'm a Jeep lover. If you're new here, I, I've always loved Jeeps since I was a kid. This is a really standard, unlimited Wrangler Jeep. What comes with it is standard. If you order this Jeep brand new and you say, just give me the standard Jeep, this is what you're going to get. Standard equipment. Now, you can add a lot of options to a Jeep. They make them look better. Uh, Some of them can make them perform better. But for the most part, you get standard equipment here. Everything else, if if you can afford it and you want it, they're optional. And here's one that has all the options that I would want on a Jeep. Which one looks better? Come on, this one or? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're going to drive a car, you got to at least look good, right? Don't you guys feel that way? Yeah. Uh, now, these are a bunch of options. There's actually $15,000 worth of options on this Jeep. But it has the same standard equipment as this Jeep. This is not an option if you're a Christian here today. Now, those of you, you're not Christians, you say, well, um, you should hold us to that standard. You you saw Jesus said, this is the proof that you're my followers, that you love one another. Not that you talk about it, not that you have good intentions about it, but that you do it. You put love into action, not an option. This is something we're to live out. In fact, I want to give it to you in one sentence this week, one statement. We need to shift from intentions to actions. Say it with me. Church Online, let's read it together. Shift from intentions to actions. Isn't it true that a lot of times in our relationships, we live by intentions? And Jesus said, no, here's the revolutionary part about love. I want you to love the way I love. I want you to give your life. I want you to be willing to lay down your life. Jesus said to serve one another. To love is to put it into action. And I put it uh, it, here on the screen. I want you to see this because in the Bible, love is always an action verb. It's never a noun. It's an action verb. And I I wrote this statement the staff and I were talking about this week. Uh, I didn't come up with this statement, and I don't even know who did, but I've heard it all my life. We judge others by their actions. Isn't that true? But we judge ourselves by our intentions. We need to reverse that and and start living out love. That's what Jesus calls us to do. Let let me illustrate that. So this week, and I I hope this wasn't you. If it was, I I just, I'm so sorry for what I said to you, okay? Uh, But this week, you didn't even hear me, but I'm still sorry because you're about ready to hear it. So this week, Kathy and I were driving somewhere and this lady pulled out in front of me. I mean, I almost hit her. I almost couldn't avoid hitting her. And she's talking on her phone at the time. And and I mean, it's like she didn't even see me. And my first response was, you idiot. I know, can you guys believe your pastor would say that? (laughs) Not that you would ever say that, I know. So I said, you idiot. And then, you know, we pulled up beside her. I mean, I got in the other lane and Kathy goes, oh, she's talking on her phone. Um, You know, for me though, I mean, I'm judging her by her actions. She pulled out in front of me, and I'm like, what is wrong with you? And again, lady, if you're here, I'm sorry. (laughs) Hang up your phone, okay, Um, (laughs) while you're driving. But see, if that had been me, if I had pulled out in front of her, and and I would have seen it, man, I'm sure the phone call, it would be an emergency. Otherwise, I wouldn't be on the phone, and I would have pulled out in front of her, and like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I judge her by her actions, but uh, I judge me by my intentions doesn't work. Jesus says, no, you need to love one another. This is a new commandment. Well, what's new about it, Jesus? Man, I'm telling you, I want you to live it out, and I'm the example. Put it into action. So we need to shift from intentions to actions. Shift in our relationships. Shift from intentions to actions. 
You know, if, if you've ever had a car uh, where it's in the wrong gear, and I know some of you are going, well, we don't have to shift our car called automatic. I know, but your car does shift. You know that, right? Uh, some of you are like, I don't even, I don't know. But you got to get in the next gear to get better performance. So if you were saying, hey, we're going to go on a highway, and we're going to go on vacation, we're going to travel from here to L.A., but you could only get in second gear. And yes, your car has a second gear. Most cars have five gears nowadays. I saw an ad for one car this week. They're advertising seven gears in an automatic. Uh, Jeep, the new Jeeps have nine gears. And why more gears? Because the more gears, the better the performance. Low end and high end, high speed, better gas mileage. Same is true for your relationship. You got to go to the next gear. Keep adding to that. Now, if you are stuck in second gear and you're getting on the highway, you're going to get to L.A. if you drive 20 miles an hour. Or if you want to drive fast, you're just going to blow up your motor, your engine, in a matter of a couple miles. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of us do with our relationships. We're stuck in a gear and we don't go to the next gear. And the gear that we're stuck in is just intentions. We need to shift from intentions to actions, shift from intentions to actions. Now, I want to, I want to illustrate this for you, being in the wrong gear. You're not going to be able to hear anything good from this. This is a YouTube video, but I want you to watch this. and just, You just need to see the action here, okay, from being in the wrong gear. Watch this. The conversation's over. I'd like you to close the door and go ahead and proceed on your way. That's the safest way to proceed, okay? Conversation's okay. over. Okay, okay. Okay, have a better day. Okay. Be careful pulling out, Okay. See, that's what happens to our relationships. We're in the wrong gear. We live in the gear of intentions, and we need to shift to actions so that we can add value, knowing that our relationships, they don't complete us, only the relationship with Jesus does. And when we have that one right, then we can add value, and they can add value to us. But we got to get in the right gear. Now, I know you guys couldn't hear any of that, but I, I had to leave it till the very end so that I could tell you. The, the guy, uh, he's revving his engine at the very end, he kept revving it. And I don't know if you could hear, the cop said, turn off your engine, stupid. <laughs> I'm like, I, I love that. <laughs> uh, uh, wrong gear. Let's get in the right gear. So let's say it again together. Shift from intentions to actions in your relationships. Jesus said, love one another in the way that I have loved you. Now, how do we do that? How do we live it out? Let me give you a couple things today from Scripture. We need to be present and be engaged. You need to be present and be engaged. Have you ever been uh, out to dinner with someone and uh, they're sitting across from you and they're texting somebody else all the time? They're not present and they're not engaged. You know, it's like, please, join the human race. I, sometimes I'll get out my phone and text them and say, please, you know, we're, I'm spending my time with you right now. Uh, be present, be engaged. Now, I want to look at the writer John. Uh, he really follows up with what Jesus said earlier in John. Uh, as he's quoting Jesus, now he's writing about it. And I love his story because John uh, was a follower of Jesus and he writes uh, several uh, books in the New Testament. John uh, is told historically that uh, as he got older, he had to be carried to the synagogue, to the church, uh, to still teach as he got older, but he kept doing it. They would carry him physically, he couldn't do it. And, and I love it because when you, you read history, uh, stories, uh, history outside of the Bible, we find out that the people got annoyed with John's teaching because he kept coming back to this one teaching. Jesus said this, love one another. John, please quit talking about it. He goes, no, no, we got to get this. Jesus said we're to love one another. Love God, love one another. Love God, love one another. And we see it right here in his writings in 1 John 3. He says, this is a message you've heard from the beginning, the beginning of Jesus, the beginning of of time in the Old Testament, we see it. He says, here's the message. We should, let's read it together. We should love one. What is it? We should love. So simple. John, do you have to keep saying this? Yeah, we need to get this because this is what changes everything. 
And the way we should love, he goes on to say, is we must not be like Cain. We're to love like Jesus, not like Cain. And it kind of throws me off there. I'm reading, love one another, don't be like Cain. And so what's the story of Cain? Well, it's an incredible historical moment. It's the first murder in the Bible. It's the first known murder in human history. Go back to Genesis chapter 4. Cain and Abel, they're brothers. And Cain kills his brother Abel. Now, John says here, don't be like him. And if you're like me, I read this and I'm like, well, there are some people that I don't think are real lovable, that I, maybe I'm not real loving toward, but I don't want to kill them, right? I mean, I mean honestly, if, if you ask me if I'm a lovable person, um, yeah, I'm a pretty lovable person because I'm not killing anybody. Well, John, why did you say don't be like Cain? When you go back and you read what God says to Cain before he kills his brother, he's got anger in his heart. And we know that our actions always start with our thoughts that become feelings, feelings become actions. God comes to Cain and he says this. He says, Cain, sin is crouching at your door. You see, and John shows us, this is what it's like when you don't put love into action you leave the door open, just a crack, for the enemy to take you places you don't want. It's like a lion waiting to pounce on you. And I know most people listening to my voice, whether you're here or online, you'd say, I would never kill anybody. And I get that. Most of us will spend our lives never killing anybody. Now, aren't you glad for that, for all the people around you? And you're like, well, I'm glad they're not going to do that. I mean, that's just a, a, a fact. We won't. But Jesus says, look, I mean, God comes to Cain and says, you don't understand. You're leaving the door open. This will destroy your relationship. Sin is waiting to pounce. We don't want to leave that door open. What do we do? We need to love one another. We need to put it into action. Not just talk about it, but put it into action. One of the things I love about this story is there's a quote that we hear all the time, and people have no idea where it comes from. I hear newscasters saying it at times. And the statement is this. God comes to Cain after he kills his brother Abel. He says, where's your brother? God knew where he was. But his reaction to God was, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is yes. Yeah. To the point that we're supposed to love one another and put love into action. Yes, we are to love. Don't leave that door open. Be present and be engaged. Now, I'm going to give you a few tips. These are my tips. I'm not giving you scripture with them, okay? Okay. This is a loose love translation. Don't go out of here and say, hey, the Bible says this. Okay, I'm, I'm not saying that, although I think we could find some scriptures to say that, okay? If you think something good, say it. This is one way that you shift from intentions to action. We need to shift from intentions to action. Make that shift in your relationship. Love one another. Just say it. Now, guys, we're the worst at this. Men, I mean, I, I think, and you know, whether you're married or not, but we're, we're just not, not naturally good at this, men for the most part. I know I'm generalizing, generalizing there, but my wife, there are so many times that I'll say, well, you know, that's how I feel. I've told you that. And she goes, you've never said that. You may have thought it, but you didn't say it. So just say it. This is one way you put it into action. If you think something special, do it. Don't just keep thinking about it. That's intentions. Make it an action. If you think something special, do it. And the third one is this. If you want something different, be it. Be it. If you want something different in your relationship, this is God's principle that the whole universe operates on. It's called sowing and reaping. You want, to be a, you want good friends in your life? Be a good friend. And, and I know a lot of us would say, well, I'll start being a good friend when they start. I can just tell you where you're going to end up. You're going to end up with no good friends. Because it's sowing and reaping. You be it. In your marriage, you say, well, I, I need something different out of my marriage. Be it to your spouse. Those of you who are single, you're, maybe you're dating or you want to get married someday, you need to be the person that you want to marry. I, I love this. Uh, Mike Gray and I, our Next Steps pastor, we were talking about it this week. Uh, we were in Mexico on, on a, a planning session together. And uh, he said, you know, Jeff, when my daughter was young, we sat down, and, and she said that she wanted to get married someday, so we sat down, and we wrote out a list of what she wanted in her husband. She said the very first thing on the top of the list was, I want him to be a godly man who loves Jesus, sold out all the way. And he, he said, I, I started training her early on. If you want that in him, 
You need to be that in your life. It's sowing and reaping. If you want something different, be it. So let, let's take this in our relationships. Let's apply what Jesus said. We're to love one another. Not just talk about it, not just intend to, but put it into action. Let's shift from intentions to action. Let's really love one another. I love this quote from Dr. John Maxwell, uh, one of my favorite authors, and uh, he's been a mentor to me at different times over the years. He said this, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I mean, isn't that true of us? And, and I can't tell you, um, in my relationship with my wife, Kathy, I, I'm, I'm a fix-it guy. Most of us as men, ladies, you probably know this, but men, we like to fix things. So if you say, you know, how do, what do I do with this? We want to come up with a plan to fix it right away. But you know what, Kathy, I've learned over the years what she really needs? She just needs me to hold her, to hug her, and to, to say, I, I care. And, and usually, then I don't have to end up fixing anything. <laughs> Somehow that steals because all she needed to know is not how much I cared. But I, I want the opportunity then to fix it. I don't know. Uh, it kind of takes, but we need to express how much we care. Now, we have a couple things that we have uh, designed around this time, this series, to help you out, especially those of you who are married. If you're married and you're really struggling, we have a group for you. Now, we have life groups. We have discipleship groups. Groups started this week. Uh, we want to see you be in a group. Our group started. It was just a great week, a uh, great time together, doing life together. So we have some groups for married couples. Uh, this is one of those groups. It starts. It's very limited on size, but it starts this week. Take out your connection card, let us know. Steve's going to talk more about it. We also have a workshop that we've designed just for this series that's coming up in a few weeks. These are led by professionals from, from, our, um, from our church, from a live church. But this is, man, you want to take your relationships to the next level. You take your marriage to the next level. Or if you're getting married, you need to take this workshop. So let, let's be present, be engaged. Let's learn how to do that. Paul said this in Galatians. Let's read it together. Church online, join us. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good. We should what? Do. We should do good. We shouldn't think good. I mean, it starts there, but he doesn't say, just think about it. He says, do it. Put it into action. Go from intentions to action. That's the gear we want to be in. Shift from intentions to actions. Living out what Jesus said. Those relationships won't complete you, but they can add a lot of value to your life, and you can add value to them when you start putting uh, your intentions into action. He says, do good. So shift from intentions to action. Say it with me one more time. Shift from intentions to action. Do this. It'll change your relationships for the better. You'll start seeing your relationships add value the way God intended them to be. You need to be present and be engaged. Let me give you one more thing. Stay focused on Jesus as your example. Stay focused on Jesus. Don't focus on me. Don't focus on any other person. That's part of our mission here at Alive. It's leading people who are far from God to be followers of Jesus, leading people to Jesus, training them to follow Jesus, and sending them to lead for Jesus. It's about Jesus. Keep your eyes on him. He's the one who completes you. And besides that, he's the standard and he said it himself. He said, this is what's revolutionary, that you would not only love one another, but you'd love this way, the way that I have loved you. I mean, isn't it true that we need a standard of perfect love? And I said this earlier, but, you know, for me, if you're looking to me as the standard, it depends on who you compare me to. I mean, Jeff, are you loving? Well, who are you asking in comparison to? Compared to ISIS, I'm pretty loving. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's horrible how bad they are. And if you want to compare me to them, I'm telling you, I'm a shining star. But, you know, compare me to Jesus, well, that's a different level. You know, compare me to Billy Graham. Uh, Billy, he even said, you know, he had sin in his life. He, would, he had faults. He was, he was a sinner saved by grace. So we need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. That person sitting next to you or that you're at home with right now, they will fail you. They don't intend to. That, that's not what they want. But because we're human, our standard of love, we will never live that out completely without Jesus. So keep him as your example. Here's what John goes on to say in 1 John 3. He says, we know what real love is. How do we know that, John? What's it really look like? He says, because Jesus gave up his life for us. 
That's real love, taking it from intentions to actions. Aren't you glad that Jesus didn't just intend to give us grace and forgiveness, but he put it into action? He led the way, and that's what real love is. He says, so we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. We're to give, to put it into action. He goes on and says, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let's read it together. Let us show the truth by our actions. How do we show the truth of love? By our actions. Putting it into action. We need to take that step. Shift from intentions to actions. And he goes on and he confirms what Jesus has said and he wrote about it. He says, our love will show that we belong to the truth. The truth here is mentioned as this is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We belong to him. How do people know? Jesus said it. The proof that you're my follower is that you love one another. Now, Jesus loves us in that way. One of the things that we do to celebrate that is uh, we take communion together. I want to take you back to Ephesians 3.19, the key verse for this series as we start today. Paul said it this way. He said, you, may you experience the love of Christ. And again, that's my prayer for you, that you would experience in a greater way or for the very first time today. So one of the things that we do as a church, because Jesus told us to do this, is that we take communion to remember what he did for us on the cross. It's a symbol of us remembering what he put into action to complete us, his love put into action going to the cross. So we're gonna do that here in just a moment. Now, I'm gonna ask the ushers, if you would, go ahead and pass out the bread and the juice and as they pass it out, I'm going to share a few things with you. You guys just hold on to it. We'll take communion together. Church online, there at home, or wherever you're at in your office, go find some bread, some juice. Take communion with us. Again, this is a symbol. He goes on, and he said this. Paul said, this will, then you will be made complete. So when we take communion, we're celebrating the fact that Jesus put love into action, that God the Father put love into action, and he makes us complete. We're made complete by this relationship with him. Now, you don't have to be a member of a live church to take communion with us. The scripture says this is something you do as a follower of Jesus. You need to be a member of his family. And if you've never made that decision, you can do that right now. You may be here, you've never made that decision. You say, well, I don't feel complete. That's why I'm here. And you're right, there's more. You were made to be complete in Christ. And here's what happens when you make that decision. It's all good. Our sins are forgiven. That's why he went to the cross, to make us right with God the, Fa God the Father and forgive our sins. Anybody glad for that? And, and our guilt and the shame of our past is removed. It's not held against us. It is removed. We are made complete, the right relationship with God the Father. And that's why we take communion. It's a symbol to remember what he did for us and to thank him. So I, I want to pray here for just a moment, and I want you guys just to keep passing that out as we're doing this. But those of you, if you're a follower of Christ, would you just make this a time of preparation and thank God for all that he's done? Just, just take a moment and pray with a grateful heart. Say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done in my life. And if you're not a follower of Christ and you say, I'm ready to be made complete, just pray this prayer. Make that decision right now and celebrate taking communion, the symbol of Jesus' love with us. Just pray, say, Lord, I, I invite you into my life. I ask you to forgive me. Thank you that you took action by putting your love, taking action and, putting, and giving yourself on the cross for me to forgive my sin. I, I receive that right now. Would you make me complete in you, my relationship with you right now? Remove my guilt, the shame of my past. And from this moment on, help me to live in a right relationship with God the Father, complete in your love. And as we keep praying, Christian, those of you, man, you're, you've been a follower of Christ maybe a long time or you're new at this, but would you just thank the Lord for all that he's done for you? Because... He makes us complete, and this is a symbol of us celebrating that. Just take a moment and thank him. Now, here's what 
Jesus did, and Jesus is the one who told us to continue doing this. He was at the Passover meal. It was the night before his death. And these are, this is celebrating Passover meal. Passover comes from uh, the idea of in Exodus, God sent one of the plagues. Uh, he calls it a miracle. Uh, we call it a plague. Uh, but to, to free Israel, he said, I'm going to kill the firstborn of everyone in the land, including the firstborn of the animals. And he comes to God's people and he says, I want you to sacrifice a lamb, put the blood on the doorposts, and the angel of death will pass over your home. And that is a picture in the Old Testament of what Jesus is going to do for us in the New Testament. And when we invite him into our lives, what he did for us on the cross, and ask for forgiveness, we are applying the blood. That's why Jesus is called by John, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And we're applying his blood to the doorpost of our hearts and our lives. And now he passes over our sin and gives us forgiveness. And so as we take this, we're taking this as a symbol to thank him and to remember the incredible sacrifice he did for us by putting love into action and completing us. Jesus said, as he took the bread and broke it, he said, this is my body that's broken for you. Take it and remember. So let's take and remember with grateful hearts. Then Jesus took the cup. And he said, this is my blood that brings forgiveness of sins that's shed for you. So let's take and let's remember what he did for us on the cross. Jesus, we are so grateful because of the cross. You pass over our sin. You forgive our sin. And as we celebrate this today together, we want to remember. Thank you that your love in action forgives us and completes us in our relationship with God the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm telling you, I'm so grateful for what Jesus did for me on the cross. Anybody else? Now, I asked you a little while ago, I said, what is one of your favorite um, movie quotes? And hopefully it wasn't everybody saying, you complete me, right? So let me go back here so we can find it. And I'm going to read some of yours. Um, somebody said this, hi-ho, silver. Cool. Uh, Yo, Adrian, I did it. That's pretty good, Sylvester Stallone, don't you think? Yo, Adrian. Oh, this is a great one. Tom Hanks. There's no crying in baseball. <laughs> That's great. Uh, my kids gave me a card. I've told them that all growing up. There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. Uh, here's one. Jack Nicholson. You can't handle the truth. Everybody, you guys got that? Man. As you wish. I don't know what that one's from. Oh, how could I forget that one? That was on last night, by the way. I got to tell you, uh, we've seen that so many times, and my favorite quote from that movie is, have fun storming the castle, um, but I, I love that. My kids quote it all the time, and every time we quote it, my wife says, I've never seen that movie, and we're always like, you've seen it with us like five times, and I said that last night, and it was on last night, and she says, I've never seen that movie, and I said, honey, you have seen that movie. She's, I don't know why. She's got something with that one. For Narnia, oh my goodness, there's so many here, guys, I can't read them all. Uh, let me find one more. It doesn't matter, it's in the past. No, I don't know. What is it? Oh, Lion King, that's right. Mufaso said it, right? Mufasa? Riki? Rafiki. Yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> Here's, I have to end with this one, because if you, if you don't know this one, if you've never seen this movie, I'm not sure you're even a Christian. Okay. Get that corn out of my face. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Nacho Libre, yes. Oh, my goodness, guys. Man, welcome to a new world. You go home and watch that, and you're going to go, oh, wow, this is a new world around here. Today, I, you know, we've had a great time together. Very serious subject, though. I want to tell you, this will change your world. We start loving each other the way Jesus tells us to. Shift from intentions to actions. Be present, be engaged. There's a couple ways we do that. And stay focused on Jesus. 
Look at how he treats people. Look at how he interacts with people. Look at how he loves us and loves others. Now, if you would, take out your connection card. One of the things we like to do around here is say, how are we going to put into action what we're learning from Scripture today? We don't want to just be hearers. We want to be doers. And this will, shifting from intentions to actions, will change your world. This is becoming more like Jesus. Love one another. So on the back here, the The next step this week is I will shift from intentions to actions in my relationships by, and you fill this out. Don't don't, don't put a date. That's not it. Some of you are going to go, well, by 2016, then I'll do it. No. (laughs) Be specific. And and I'll tell you mine. So mine this week, a few weeks ago, I called my mom, and I'm terrible about calling on a regular basis, and it had probably been six weeks since I called her. Isn't that horrible? Oh, my gosh. I know. But she gets called every Mother's Day, Christmas. (laughs) Anyway, when I called, I, I knew that I must really be bad at this because mom says, why are you calling me? Is something wrong? I'm like, mom, I'm just calling to see how you're doing. It's been a while. She goes, oh, I don't really hear from you that much. And so <laughs> mine, that, I was really convicted about it coming into this series. And so my action is I'm going to call my mom once a week. Now, I made a mistake last night that she was online and I didn't know it for sure. And I said it publicly and I got a text right after service. I'm looking forward to those calls. <laughs> So would you all pray for me? Okay. And I'm going to be praying for you. So drop those in the offering bucket here in a moment. Let's put it into action. Now, I, I want you to remember this today. You know, some of your relationships, you're living life where it looks like that guy who had the car in the wrong gear. It's just a crashed windshield, and you're like, this is trouble. It's not how God intends for you to live. He wants you to add value in your relationships. You, you, you don't have to worry about completing someone. And don't look to anybody else to complete you but Jesus. But our relationship should add value. That's what God has for us. That's why Jesus said, follow my example. This is a radical new teaching. Revolutionary. Love one another. How do you do it? The way I loved you. It's not just talking about it. It's by doing it. And he said, I love you so much that I'm willing to lay down my life for you. That's what we're called to do. It'll change our lives. Thank you so much for being here this week for the beginning of RPM. Next week, we're going to talk about passion and how sometimes we look at it to